one of the things I was interested in is this idea that you now have for dealing with um, um, you know, the sense of delayed motion by actually cutting the image in and out. Um, sure. Is that something that you would have always known was the solution, or did that just kind of come to you? It didn't come even come to us. We've. I mean, we've been researching and collaborating with a lot of other people. Valve has actually been really helpful in researching that technique. And it's been around for a while, the idea of using a pulsed backlight or a very low persistence display. There's even some old CRT monitors that were uh, designed with very, very fast decaying phosphors so that you could do low persistence and never really so caught on. it was a feature, on. not a bug. I just thought they were bad TVs. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, I mean, they were bad TVs. but. It, it, it's only recently the technology's made this kind of viable for a consumer device. Uh, it's, you couldn't have made a low persistence VR headset five years ago at all and certainly not well. Um, the only way that you can get around low persistence tech, I think it's going to be basically mandatory for a good VR experience going into the future until we can get displays that run so fast that a single full persistence frame is as short as our low persistence flash. And you would need to get up to like a thousand frames a second to do that. So until we have thousand hertz displays, thousand FPS rendering, and some hypothetical crazy video link with hundreds of times more bandwidth than HDMI, we're gonna be stuck with other solutions. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you get tons of questions about gaming and people that discuss other applications, military, medical, and so on. But I'm sure you've got lots of thoughts about that. Um, and I just wonder where you, what you know about happening now, or you see happening in the next few years if people start to look at what else you're going to do with really good VR. Well, I've worked in a military VR research lab, so I know a bit about it. What's interesting is that VR has disappeared in the consumer market these past few decades, but um, it has always remained in the professional industries, especially the military. That's what's kept it going, and you know, that's what's really kept it going. And that industry never died, but it was always very expensive, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars per unit, and even then the performance really wasn't up to par, because they were dealing with custom components that were built, you know, especially for the job, which made them expensive and often not not the best solution, mm -hmm. but now you have billions of dollars being poured into the mobile phone market, and that money is driving research and development around displays and sensors that no VR company ever could have done in the past at any price point. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, how is it being used as a different um, One of the things that is noticeable, and we talked about this in great reports, is that cheap consumer tech is often much better than really expensive military tech. That's just, yeah, that, that, that can be true, and that's one of the reasons a lot of the, a a lot of different military programs are actually shifting towards using more off-the-shelf systems, like using uh, using normal Android phones with custom builds of Android uh, that you know make them more secure. But it's still consumer hardware, and it's easy to replace, cheap to build, as opposed to systems in the past, like the Land Warrior system, where they were using customized, specialized mobile computing hardware. It was expensive, it was heavy, and it didn't have this huge force of consumer R&D behind it. Uh, very, very quickly, because it takes, there's these long, when they develop it internally, it can take a very long time for these products to come out. The consumer market is much faster than that. You don't have seven years to finish your product. You need to get it done by next quarter, and you need to make it better than everyone else's that quarter, and that drives innovation a lot faster. Um, so I think that actually, a lot of, like our Crystal Coke prototype we're showing, I think is better than most, if not all, professional head mounts out there, just because technologies move so fast in the consumer space. One of my fantasies is medical, actually, that somebody, a surgeon, will walk through a CAT scan before... Already people doing that, too. Uh -huh. That's actually been one of the big uses of VR in research. Has been, over the years, it's, it's been obvious. The idea was you, know, you take a 3D scan and you'd be able to look at it at scale, you know, as if you're actually inside the body, but you've cut everything away except whatever area of interest you have. And there's still people that are doing that, and they're starting to move to the rift. And instead of these systems costing hundreds of thousands of dollars and being in only the top research hospitals with only a few people really working with them, it's now a few hundred dollars worth of gear that any medical student can start experimenting with. And actually, there's one university for their medical school that bought, it was 20-something Rift development kit so that they could, that they, they have a class that's on 3D medical imaging, and they bought them for that class because, you know, not just the Rift, but VR in general, they see as the future of a lot of diag you know, diagnostic tools. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that um, word of Oculus has been out for quite a bit. There really aren't any big companies that really caught up. I mean, even the Sony headset is really still more of a kind of a, like a theater. 
experience? Yeah, well, they've been selling it since before the Rift was, you, you know, anything. Right, there's this update. They showed that at CS yeah. 2010, actually. So yeah. it's it's basically the same same type of device. It's a, actually a really good home home cinema device. If you want to wear a screen on your face, it's one of the better choices. Great. But for uh, hardware, are there other people coming into the field? Are you hearing a lot of, I mean, you know, bad competition? Or? I think we're going to be the best for a while. Uh -huh. I really do.